What's good people? Welcome to another video again on my channel. So thank you for stopping by. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about my investment strategy. So earlier today I was talking with a very, very intelligent friend of mine and he was talking to me about his investment strategy and how he plans out his portfolio. So you know what? I thought, okay, this is a very, very good idea. Um, could you share with me your template? And he was very nice enough to share with me his template. So I took that template, replicated it, and put my um, everything I had been doing on paper to actually follow a plan rather than just going the freestyle that I've been going. Um, very, very valuable friends I have in my back pocket. I love to have them around. They're always giving me very good ideas, and I'm happy to share them with you all. So let's get right to it. So... Um, just to give a little background on uh, my investment story. So I started investing um, back in 2019 and I actually started out my portfolio with $100, um, which is a very long way away from where I'm at today. Um, glory be to God. So just saying that out, putting that out there to just, you know, let everyone know that, you know, it's very possible to grow your portfolio with time and patience and due diligence. Um, so keep at it and the progress is gonna continue to come. So starting off with my investment horizon. So I am looking, this plan is set out for the next two years. Um, so my investment horizon is um, how long I'm gonna be going with this plan. And then after that two years, I will be coming back to this and reevaluating how I am managing my portfolio and um, balancing the, my different investments. So the reason I picked two years is because I will be graduating college in 2022. Um, so I'm going to give myself one more year after graduating college to figure out my situation with my career and then see how I want to invest um, like when my career has been kicked off. So starting off, my current total portfolio size is a little over $25,000. So Currently, it is mostly in stocks. Um, so I actually use M1 Finance to manage my long-term portfolio. Throughout time, I've been able to get over a little over 1,200% return on my investment within this time frame, which is very, very exciting. So now my balance in my M1 Finance is sitting at $8,259. And I would recommend M1 Finance to anybody out there that's looking for long-term investment it's a really, really good platform. It keeps you very, very grounded uh, because you're not going to be doing a lot of trading daily. It focuses more on the long-term aspect of things. So now my holdings in this M1 Finance is Tesla, my biggest um, piece of my portfolio, followed by Square. Everyone knows I'm very bullish on Square. I have a few. I have a video on it, and I'll have a few more videos about Square coming out. And then Airbnb. I'm very excited about that one too. So these are currently my holdings in my long-term portfolio. So my goal is to keep this at 45%, but as you can see right now, it's actually about 40% of my investments. So I have to work a little bit on rebalancing here. So then um, I made a video earlier about how I recently got into options trading. And options trading, for anyone who doesn't know, is when you buy a contract, it's a lot more riskier than buying a stock because in this case, you don't actually own the stock. You own the right to buy the stock um, or at least 100 shares of a company. And there is always an expiration date. So expirations make it more risky as well. So as you can see here, my portfolio in options is currently sitting at a little over $6,000. So we can see here that I have holdings in Lemonade, which I just recently made a video about. Very excited about this company disrupting the insurance space. And then my second holding here is Open Door, which I also made a video recently about, and they are currently disrupting the real estate market. And then my third holding here is Vail. Vail is a company that will be supplying the EV market, especially with nickel. And nickel has gone into a shortage and currently, Vail is the number one producer of nickel. So if any company wants to supply Tesla, Vail is the only company that can actually supply the demand. Moving on to my ETFs. 
which is a more of a um, conservative um, plan in order to conserve my risk here. My goal is to have it as 15%, but as you can see, it's actually 1%, which is very sad. I have to balance out my risk here, um, hedge against my risk and be more safe. So I have to increase, rebalance my entire portfolio um, by moving things maybe a little bit from options um, down here to my ETFs. So as you can see here, the only holdings I have is an Acorn, and I would suggest anyone out there to use Acorn. Um, connect your cards to it. It basically rounds up the cents and it invests for you in the long term. Um, I would say do this because it's a way for you to invest in yourself while you're buying a lot of different things out there. You may as well be investing in the future as well. And it's very, very, like, you. I don't even look at my Acorn really, only once a month maybe. You don't have to do a lot. You just kind of set the portfolio how you want. You can see um, where the money is being put. Um, and then you can choose a, between a few options, between aggressive to low risk, and they manage a portfolio based on those options. So moving on to my speculative investments, my goal is to keep it at 10%. But you can see here it's actually at 25%, which is actually a lot. So... My balance is currently at 5,461. And the reason this is because last year I actually invested about $500 in Ethereum. Um, and the market since then has 10x. So my return on my almost 11x actually. So the return on my investment here is what I am sitting on with an initial investment of a little over a little around $500 actually, which has been a great investment so far. So all of this is sitting in Ethereum and not Bitcoin, actually. Um, so it's in the crypto market, which is speculative. My goal is to keep this around 10%. As you can see, it's 25%. I don't plan on taking out any profits because I do believe um, cryptocurrency is going to continue to grow. So I just figured I would just leave it where it's at. So now moving on to a few things in my investing strategy that kind of shapes how my portfolio is moving. So number one thing I want to talk about is the fiscal policy of the government. Um, just keeping an eye on what's going on and trends and um, things that happen. So the biggest thing that just recently happened was a $1.9 trillion package that came out. Um, so the economy we can see is growing um, and really inflation is not a problem for us to worry about. The second thing I want to talk about is the V-shaped recovery. Um, so we are currently in economic growth. Um, at following the pandemic with hopes to continue to grow. We can see that the travel, leisure, and hospitality are the ones falling behind, but they're hoping to catch some fire moving on this year. So everything is looking pretty good in that regard. Empl unemployment is going down. Um, we're trying to see more people get employed, which is very, very good. And also the, the economy is doing much, much better than Biden is saying it is, which is really a, a really, really good sign. Um, and also the housing market is currently on fire, which is a very good thing, especially for any of the open door investors out there. Um, I made a video recently talking about open door and the potential for them to grow. Go check it out if you haven't yet. But I think overall the housing market is gonna grow. So if you're invested in any company disrupting the real estate market, now is the time. So moving in to talk a little bit about other catalysts I would say the EV market, obviously with Tesla running the show, any of the EV companies are going to win because as we can see the world, we need to make the world safer with cleaner energy. So I have my investments in Tesla um, as the number one leading company. Very excited about what they're doing, especially with self-driving. And then also AI. AI models are going to be growing by a crazy amount. Um, like I talked about in Lemonade, very recently they use AI to actually expedite the process of um, insurance, which is very, very insane. A lot of other AI companies are doing so as well. Moving on to digital wallets, there's a $4.6 trillion opportunity in this market, and I'm very bullish on Square, especially with their Cash App product. And as you can see, Square and PayPal, especially with Venmo as well, they have surpassed JP Morgan in terms of deposits. JP Morgan 
focuses on acquisitions, whereas Square and PayPal have been getting every single one of their customers organically, which is insane and unprecedented. And then moving on to cryptocurrency, which is currently as exploded the market and it's grown to be one of the best assets to ever invest in for the past three years, given the most return on investments compared to any other assets in the world. So Bitcoin being the forefront runner um, and Ethereum being soon to follow. And as you know, I am invested in Ethereum and I believe actually Ethereum is going to be the future. So that kind of summarizes a little bit about my portfolio and my strategies and why I'm investing in these companies. I just wanted to close out this video by saying um, I started off um, two years ago without a clear plan, without about um, a not any sort of knowledge about whatever I was doing. I was just kind of free balling, um, going about how I went and I still am really free balling. Um, but I try to do my due diligence, go and look into research. And I have a lot of good friends around me that also share their knowledge with me, which is very, very good, very exciting. And I can't, I can't thank them enough. I really appreciate everything they've done. So once again, I just wanted to share this video with you all to show you my investment strategy, talk a little bit about where I'm at, my progress in the past two years. I know this is a very new channel and I hope the rest um, you all follow me through the rest of this. I will be sharing more updates about what I'm invested in, some stocks I think will be the future, and the uh, next disruptive technologies moving forward. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll talk to you very soon.